Welcome back to Otaku No Video. Thanks for joining me for the backstory where I'm going to look at a news story of the week and explain the story behind the story. Today we're talking about Masaki Yuasa's recent film, Lou Over the Wall, which came out in Japan this past week. If you're not familiar with Masaki Yuasa, that's what I'm here to talk about. So, Lou Over the Wall looks to be a family film in the tradition of um, Summer Wars and Ghibli films and things along those lines. The Girl Who Leapt Through Time. And indeed, it looks like it's more or less Ponyo. It's about a middle school student uh, instead of a young kid who goes out to this seaside uh, area and happens upon this little mermaid girl and it has a big adventure with her. Looks adorable, looks like a lot of fun, and um, the thing is, it's by Masaki Yuasa, who is a famous, some might say infamous, anime director known for doing weird things. He's probably best known for Mind Game, which is an anime film made some time ago, um, and it is about a man, well, I'll put it this way, the movie begins with the protagonist getting shot and dying, and then the rest of the film continues on from there. So it's this odd, almost Python-esque story um, with very odd visuals, very extreme animation. Uh, he then went on to make Kaiba, which is this retro future animated uh, TV series that is, again, visually different, artistically different than pretty much any other anime you're going to see. Characters have weird outfits, and it's set in this bizarre sci-fi world. More modern anime fans would probably know him more from Ping Pong, the, <laughs> the animation, which used a lot of rotoscoped animation, which means that they took live actors filmed them, and then just drew over the outlines for much of the animation. Very divisive visually and artistically, but that was just a thing they did. They were trying something out. And there's other stuff that goes on in the show that's really interesting. But he's a very distinctive director. So it's one of the interesting things about this movie that he's known for doing weird, over-the-top stuff, and instead, he's making a more family-friendly film. Now, I should say, the extended trailer shows some fishmongers preparing fish for a shark in a business suit. A humanoid shark wearing a business suit. So there's definitely some weirdness in this film. But that's good. We need more weirdness, right? So that is the, the quick... Um, sort of overview of Masaki Yuasa's kind of uh, experience and what he does. So let me talk a little bit more about um, uh, the the film. The basic concept is that well, I've already described that, um, but th this is his first original story. Everything up to this point has been an adaptation of something. Um, except for Kaibo, which was a TV series. It was his first original anime film. Um, so this, this main character moves to this uh, fishing town, and I believe he ends up joining uh, a band with some of his classmates, and then discovers this mermaid. What's also interesting about the film is the cast and crew. The... <laughs> boy. The... Script was written by Yuasa and Reiko Yoshida, who worked on Non Non Biori and Tamako Market. So two pretty grounded anime series, all things considered. The characters were adapted by uh, a guy who worked on Kaiba and Ping Pong. The art director worked on Wolf Children. The sound director worked on Ponyo. The uh, producer worked on Ping Pong. The music was composed by the composer for when Marnie was there, and the um, the mermaid girl is played by um, uh, what's her name? Sorry, by Kenon Tani, who played the main girl in Your Name, Makoto Shinkai's 
Kimi no Nawa, your name. So he definitely seems to have gathered a group of people who worked on Ghibli films, Mamoru Hosoda films, or you know some of his previous works. Really interesting to see that. So what my hope here is that we're getting a director who is combining a taste for the bizarre with a desire to make a family film, a, a film that you can watch with other people and you'll see weird stuff, but that's fine, right? And people can, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy has weird stuff in it. So I'm hoping it's going to be kind of like that. And we're going to get more kind of Ghibli-esque films, perhaps something more like a Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy Ghibli film. But hey, why not? That's the backstory. Hope this has been helpful.